Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So yesterday during my error review, I asked you to submit all your questions about the episode, so I picked 10 of them to answer in this video with one bonus question. So we also got some big news about whenever Merlin's coming back, so I'll talk about that too. If you're finding me for the first time, I do Q&A videos like this for all the big shows that I do. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. I'm also working on a special Arrow countdown series that's going to start next Wednesday too. So before we do questions, let's talk about Merlin, because we just found out that he's coming back in episode 22. That's right, they just posted the description for Streets of Fire, and it talks about Thea running into Merlin, or Merlin running into Thea. It's hard to tell what's going to happen, but based on what happens in that episode, we can kind of guess what he's going to be doing in the finale. You know, whether or not he's going to be fighting with Team Arrow against Slade, or doing something completely different. But we'll have to wait to find out. So, on to questions. Careful for spoilers if you haven't seen the episode yet, but here we go. Question number one comes from Drew Cole who asks, do you think that Laurel will tell Oliver she knows he's the arrow, or will she just keep it to herself? So I think she'll listen to what Quentin said and just keep it to herself. When she went to hug him, you could tell that she wanted to support him, and if she had told him, he'd probably be way too distracted worrying about her to fight Slade. You know, add to that all the extra problems with Queen Industries, Thea, and Roy right now, and you arrive at hug time. So really the best thing that she could have done for him in that moment was give him a hug, and she did, which is why it was so awesome. I think her relationship with Team Arrow will be just like Quentin's in Season 3, except she'll know who they are, but they won't know that she knows. She'll be like a stealth member of Team Arrow, so stealth that Oliver won't even know that she's on the team. Question number two, Baby Maker asks, wow, what a name. Why does Oliver keep calling Thea Speedy? So Speedy is just his affectionate nickname for her as her older brother. He uses it whenever he wants to show he cares about her. It's one of the ways he shows his brotherly affection. It's not meant to foreshadow that she's going to become the speedy character from the comic books. I've seen a lot of you commenting too on whether or not you think she's going to become the Artemis character, but I think we're going to have to wait to see what happens in the finale to know where her character's going. She's kind of blowing around in the wind right now. I think what's going to end up happening with her character, and in relation to Merlin specifically, is that it's going to be like when Oliver's father had to choose between Isabel Rochev and his family. Thea will just be forced to choose between Merlin and her family. I don't think he's going to train her or anything like that. And if she ever did become a member of Team Arrow, it would be way more fun to watch Oliver train her. Just imagine her slapping endless bowls of water like Roy. Question number three, Sharmalan asks, What about the bandage on Roy's arm? Could that have been part of the plot to clone him like they did with Cadmus Labs? So, you're thinking like Superman, Superboy situation. No, I don't think that's going to happen. It would be really interesting, but I think they'd only choose to clone a metahuman. Like someone with actual superpowers, and Roy is just juiced up on Mirakuru. The bandages are probably just wherever they attach the machine to his veins to get blood out. I think if they ever ended up doing a cloning storyline in the future, especially with Star Labs involved, they'd use it as a Flash crossover opportunity. So it would have to be some big epic thing. That just seems like it'd be way too complicated for them to do on the Flash show in the first season. You know, they're trying to keep that as simple as possible. There's already a ton of new characters they have to introduce, but they could always do that in the future. Question number four, legitimate gamer, you're totally legit. How did Slade get inside the Arrow Cave if he didn't have one of those super keys like the one Felicity stole off the Clock King? So you have to remember that he's ex-Special Forces, so he has a lot of experience, and now he's juiced up on Mirakuru and he's almost indestructible. As Special Forces, he had a lot of experience breaking into places, mostly to kill people, I imagine, like he almost did Team Arrow. The real reason he broke in there was to just spank them for setting his operation back, blowing up that plant. That's why he had to raid Star Labs to get the new device. I totally love that Felicity stole that key off the Clock King though. It just shows that she takes advantage of opportunities when she sees them, like, you know, window shopping for cool new toys to use in the Arrow Cave. Question number five, Green Quiver asks, How do you think Daniel Panabaker will become Killer Frost? So this is where things get really interesting, because based on her relationship with Felicity and Sisko in the episode, it seems like she's one of the good guys. But since she's such a big character from the comics, I think yes, eventually she'll become a version of Killer Frost. But I think on the show, she's just going to start out being a good person. The real question though is what is her character arc going to be on The Flash, at least in Season 1? Like is she going to start out as a good person researcher, then she gets in a horrible accident and turns evil? Or is she just going to be a normal person that gets corrupted by Zoom or someone else? Then there's also the possibility that she could become Killer Frost, but just like Arrow kind of truncated a lot of the super names, they could just call her Frost. So that could leave the window open for her to be a good superhero. Just like when they turned Oliver into the Arrow instead of turning him into the Green Arrow. 
When you decide to use a name like Killer Frost, you kind of telegraph what a character's story arc is going to be, and I think they want that to be more of a mystery for us as the fans. They want to leave open the possibility that she could be a good character. No matter what happens though, I think she's going to be a normal person for the duration of Season 1, or at least most of Season 1. I think The Flash and Zoom are going to be the only real, you know, super, super power people. I think any of the rogues that end up popping up or villains will just be using tech. You know, like the Arthur Light gun that they had locked up in storage, as opposed to, you know, new people being full-on metahumans. But the really cool thing is, though, is that they said there would be more superpowers on the show eventually, just not right away. Question number six, F Sniper asks, Do you think Team Arrow will use the cure for Slade and then use it on Roy? I think we actually need to ask whether or not it's going to be a situation where they have to pick one or the other. Like, they'll be able to cure Roy, but not Slade. Logically, you'd think they'd be able to synthesize a ton of it. And now that we know there is a cure, I think that's how Oliver's going to get rid of all the new super soldiers. So let's just say that they'll be able to make a bunch of it. You know, enough to do Roy and Slade. I definitely think that they're going to cure Roy, because he's not leaving the show. Colton Haynes isn't leaving the show. And Roy's got to finish his Jedi training so that he can become Arsenal. As for Slade though, I think everyone, even the writers, want him to be able to continue on as the Destro character but, you know, maybe a slightly less insane version. So I think they'll end up using the cure on him too, but they won't kill him, and he'll just disappear the same way Merlin did after Season 1. They'll just leave it open for him to return in the future at some point. I don't think he's going to appear a whole lot in Season 3 though. I think they're going to open the window for new villains to come in. Question number 7, Daniel Ma Desley asks, Do you think that Laura will confront Sarah about being the canary before the end of the season? I actually think we're going to get a Spider-Man 2 situation, you know, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, where they find out at the end. Remember when he was saving Mary Jane from Dr. Octopus and his mask came off and she saw it was him and they had that special moment? I think they'll do a reverse version of that, you know, because it'll be more from Sarah's perspective, since Laurel has already kind of figured out who she is. They'll have like a sister moment whenever Sarah gets unmasked in battle. I think it'll probably end up happening in the season finale. But I think until they have that mutual sister moment, she's going to treat Sarah just like she treats Oliver right now. You know, just give her hugs all the time. Question number eight, Harsh asks, Do you think that Oliver will become the mayor of the city like in the comics? Only if Moira ends up dying this season. There's still a funeral scene in episode 21, and we don't know who it's for. It could be Slade just doing a fake funeral for Isabel Roshev, so that he can surprise them with Ravager later. Otherwise, I think they're just going to let Moira have that mayor story arc. Yes, I do think it would be more interesting to let Oliver do that, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Question number nine, Lizbeth asks, The producers have hinted that Felicity's backstory is going to be a big thing in season three, but could we possibly get a cliffhanger about it in the finale? Definitely, the major arc for the next season always gets teed up by whatever ends up happening in the finale, or at least teased. So whatever the resolution of the Slade storyline is, it'll be related to Felicity's backstory. Maybe just in a minor way, but keep your eyes peeled for special Felicity stuff in episode 23. Quick side note though, I am totally hoping that Felicity's father ends up turning out to be the villain of season 3 and someone connected to Hive. Question number 10, Shmoley asks, With the Booster Gold TV series supposedly in the works, do you think we'll see a cameo in The Flash or an Arrow? So Booster Gold has always spent more time in the Flash universe, so I think if he does show up somewhere, it'll be there. They could also end up using it as an Arrow crossover just to guarantee the show a bigger audience, but I don't think we'll see him until Season 2. I don't think they're going to try and complicate that Flash storyline in Season 1 by throwing in a ton of extra characters. But Jeff Johns has totally been working on getting a Booster Gold show going for a long time, so if he has anything to say about it, you will see Booster Gold sooner rather than later. And one last bonus question, Von O'Hara asks, Do you think we'll see any more Flash characters this season? So I think the only Flash crossover we'll see for the rest of the season is one, for the Mirakuru Cure storyline, and two, for Felicity visiting Barry in Central City. I don't think that they're going to show Felicity going to Central City. I think they'll just have a scene where she says she's going to visit him in the finale, you know, after everything's over. So thank you so much for submitting questions, guys. It's always a lot of fun to be able to answer you directly in a video. Like I said, I'm doing bonus videos every Wednesday morning now, counting down to the finale. Feel free to suggest topics for those in the comments below, and subscribe to get them if you're finding me for the first time. In the meantime, click here to get my review of the episode, and click here to get my finale predictions. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you guys tomorrow, high fives.